Welcome to the Glam Cam. I'm Rachel Berenbaum, author of A Bend in the Stars, and today I'm here with Nazanin Hozar, author of the debut novel, Aria. This book was so, so good. It was stunning. It took my breath away. Nazanin, tell me, what is your book about? Well, it's about a girl who, uh, as a baby, is abandoned um, in an alleyway in early 1950s Iran, in Tehran, and is rescued by a driver in the Iranian army. And then we follow her life uh, throughout 30 years of her life, all the way up into the Iranian revolution of 1979. So no pressure or anything, but this novel has been compared to Dr. Zhivago. What do you think of that? Yeah, that, that comparison was from Margaret Atwood, and it was quite an amazing one, yeah. What did you What did you think when you saw that? Uh, I was blown away. I couldn't believe it. So tell me, what was the hardest part to write of this book? Um, just keeping keeping up. Uh, it took a very long time to write, um, and being able to keep track of all the characters. There are several characters that we follow through this book, and we follow them for uh, up to thirty years of their lives, and. Uh, keeping track of them, following them, uh, having a sense of where their lives are gonna go, that was very difficult to keep, to keep, keep all in my head. For so so how did you do it? How did you track all of your characters? Uh, taking a lot of notes, <laughs> keeping them in my head, always living with them, um, always being with them, just having them with me all the time. That's sort of how I kept, kept uh, abreast of them. One of the things that struck me in your book was the power of names and how you use names to give uh, all kinds of meaning to the story. So can we start by talking about Aria and that name? How did you come up with it? Absolutely. So Aria has sort of, in a, in a sense, two meanings. Um, so Aria is a, um, the name of the Iranian people, in a sense. We refer to ourselves as the people of Aria. And Iran itself means the land of Arya, the land of the Iranian people. Um, but uh, of course, it's also a type of music. If you know anything about classical music, you know that an aria is kind of a, a song, a story, a lament that is sung in classical music. Um, so in a sense, it's also about her story. And it is a name that the main, one of the main characters, the man who rescues Arya, it's a name that he gives her when he finds her. But also in Iranian culture, it is a boy's name. And we know that it is a culture that is very um, somewhat misogynistic and very male oriented. But here is a girl who has a very masculine name in a very male dominated society. So the name is working on several different levels. Another name that also had double meaning was uh, the woman that adopted her. All right, Arya called her Mana, which is so close to Mama. Can you talk about that too? Exactly. So it, it, in a sense, she's calling her Mana because she's not quite able to think of her as a mother. And the mother as well, this is the, the, the sort of the second mother she ends up having in her life, is not quite able to be a mother to her. She has a lot of reservations as a mother. Um, Arya ends up having several mothers throughout the story, and that's a, a story that we follow it, throughout the, the novel. And this mother in particular has a very hard time connecting with Arya, has a hard time having an emotional connection. And um, so she's almost like one removed, one step removed from mother. So instead of calling her mama, I called her mana, and that's, or, or Arya in, sen in a sense calls her mana. So that's, that's the, as far as the connection is able to go. I just love how you play with names. You do it so brilliantly. Uh, so switching gears a little bit, this book is already published in Canada. So today we're celebrating your US debut. Woo! Thank you. Thank you. Can Thank you tell me what is it like to publish in Canada and then come into the US? Oh, well, it's uh, a whole other feeling. You know, Canada is wonderful. It's where I live and it's, it's a wonderful feeling to have that. But the U.S. is such a bigger market. There's so much more at stake in a sense because there's so many, so many more readers. And in terms of diversity, there's more diverse readers as well. It's a bigger sort of multicultural pool, as you, you'd say. 
So I'm very excited. Of course, I'm a bit more, a bit more nervous. <laughs> Can you tell us about your path to publication? How long did it take and what did it take? Well, the path to publication didn't take very long. I mean, uh, soon after I uh, finished writing the, the, the novel, I entered a contest. And while um, I was shortlisted in that competition, I didn't win, but out of that shortlist, um, my name sort of became known and an editor here in Canada found out about me and decided to publish Aria in Canada. And that sort of snowballed into me getting an agent. And then through that agent, uh, I got a, a lot of different foreign deals, including the US and in the UK and various deals in Europe as well. So now the, the novel's been published and going to be published in 10 different languages as well throughout Europe. Wow. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you very much. And all of this is after how many years did it take you to write this book? Well, that, that was what took a long time. It took nine to 10 years to write the novel. <laughs> so what kind of advice do you have for new or debut authors out there? First and foremost, I would say discipline and persistence. Um, I know that people always talk about creativity and the sort of the creative spirit and drive and why that's very important. I think that in writing a novel, you first have to be very disciplined. You have to sit there every day and you write your 500 words or 1,000 words a day, and you have to stick to it. And you have to not give up, and you have to keep going until that novel is finished. And then once it's finished, the next step is to try to get it published and talk to agents and, and, and submit your novel to whatever competitions or whatever agents or whatever editors or publishers you can get it to. I think persistence is key, you know, and so is discipline. I love that because I think that so many new writers uh, spend time waiting to be struck by inspiration. And yeah. really the writers that I talk to that actually get their books published, inspiration is like 2% of what it's went into true. their book. <laughs> right? it's, inspiration is important, but hard work is key. Hard work is what will get you, get you somewhere. What would you like readers to take away from your book when they put it down, when they finish that last page? What do you want them thinking? Well, this book is really about um, the story of people who are trapped uh, in a situation that is beyond their control. They're overcome and overwhelmed by forces that they can't um, overcome or do anything about. And I think what I want readers to take away from this novel is that the idea of empathy, to empathize with another part of the world, and in particular, in this case, Iran, and to try to understand what world these people come from, and to understand it's not that much different from their own. And I, I repeatedly said it many times, is that I think that Iran and the United States are actually very similar countries, and the people are very similar people. And I think by reading this book, um, many Americans will see that that's actually the case, and that the people they're reading about are going to be very similar to them and they'll see themselves in the pages of this novel. Nazanin, thank you so much. Congratulations and may you sell many, many copies.